So what is the known y value? It is f of x1. What is the slope of the tangent line to the curve at this point? Derivative at x1 is the slope of the tangent. And the initial x value, x1, happens to actually be x1, so we'll leave that alone. Um, I don't think I'm going to solve this one for y like we did on the one before because of what we're going to do next. So everybody fully convinced that that is the equation of the tangent line, right, to that function? So here's what we want to do. We want to bring that tangent line down to the x-axis, and we want to know where it hits the x-axis. So I'm going to give it a name. Let's say this is x2. Isn't x2, even though it's the x-intercept of this line, it still is a point on that line, right? So it has to work in this equation. And if it's on the x-axis, what are the coordinates of that point? x2 comma 0. Right? So everybody agreed x2 comma 0 has to work in this equation. So I'm running out of room. Let me put that on the next page. That's okay. I can see it fine. So it must work in the equation. So I can put that new point, I'm going to put for x2, I'm going to plug it in for x. And 0, I'm going to plug in for y, and let's see what we get. So for y, we're going to plug in 0. And for x, we're going to plug in x2. So now what I would like for us to do is solve this for x2. If we start with the line that's tangent to the curve at x1, let's solve for x2. Nico? Would 0 be at the function x? Say that again. Shouldn't the 0 replace the function on the left side? Over here? Yeah. Well, that I don't know what that number is. That's the number that we got when we generated the equation of the tangent line. Look. Oh, wait, never mind. Here, here's where we are, I, because that it, it isn't a, a, a trivial substitution. So let's say we had y minus 3 equals 8 times x minus 2. We had that equation. So this is a number, that's a number, and that's a number. So we're going to know those numbers. And if we have another point that's on that line, I don't know, um, let's say that the point 4, negative 1 is also on that line. Doesn't that mean that I can put in 4 for x and negative 1 for y, and it solves that equation, right? So that's kind of what we're doing. There's a lot of letters here. We're kind of validating that this point is on the line. So we're putting that in for x and that in for y, and it should solve that equation. All right, let's solve it for uh, x2. So the first thing I want to do is isolate the term that has x2 in it. So let's divide both sides. Uh, let's do this first. Let's rewrite this. So I just got basically got rid of the 0. Now let's divide both sides by f prime x1. So that's gone. And at this point, we have uh, 
that, and what else do we need to do to solve for x2? Take this minus x1 and basically move it to the other side. So that's gone. So this should be x1 minus f of x1 over f prime at x1. That's not the generic version yet, but it's going to help us get there. So if we're searching for x2, remember what x2 is on our diagram. x2 is where the tangent line came down and hit the x-axis. By the way, isn't x2 a little closer to the root than x1 was? Here's x1. Here's the actual root. So x2 is a better approximation of the root than x1 was. So finding x2 is of value. So if we know what our initial guess was, plug, we put it here, we take the f of x1, we take the derivative at x1, so we do all that with our original data point, and it miraculously, not miraculously, it kicks out a new, better guess at the root, which is x2.